So welcome to our next video. Now this video is on 16 valves, cold starting and cold running. So why are we looking at stuff like that? Well, we've got our beautiful assistant there, but too clean, very shiny, but you can't really see what we want to look at in the engine bay because it's quite dark. So here we have an array of goodies. So we have a start motor, a thermotime switch, an inlet manifold with throttle body, a fuel meter in head, with that gizmo over there and that gizmo there. So what we're interested in is thermotime switch. Very important switch. I'll come onto the wiring later on, but that sits inside the cylinder head just below the coolant. Quite hard to see, but that's very important. Very expensive to find as well. Start motor, start a motor. We're not interested in most of it. We are just interested in this terminal. Now we come to our fifth injector or cold start valve. It's called a fifth injector because you've got one, two, three, four injectors and another one. So fifth injector, but it's not, it's a cold start valve. And then we have one fuel line going to a metering head. And then we have a cold enrichment valve and a vacuum line and a throttle body with a switch. So what are we looking at all this for? Well, I'm going to talk you through and show you how the system works, why it works, how long it works for. So we'll focus on our little friend, the fifth injector or cold start valve with a blue connector. Now it operates for an example at zero degrees between three and seven seconds when the engine's cranking. So most of us in the UK, you're not really going to be using these cars in about zero degrees. You're probably sort of five to 10. So it's going to be working for about two to three seconds, very minimal. The colder it's on, colder the car is, the longer it operates for. Now, the thermoton switch, that little one there, when it's cold, it's closed, which means that green and white wire connects to the fifth injector. And when it's warm, it's open, means that green and white wire no longer connects to a fifth injector. I'll come on to that shortly. So between these two, the fifth injector and our thermo time switch, they have a limited operation, and that is to prevent flooding. Because if you keep cranking and cranking and cranking and cranking, that fifth injector is just going to chuck so much fuel in the engine, you're going to flood it and it won't start. Then we'll move over to these two. So this is our cold enrichment valve and our throttle body. We know what the throttle body does, let's air in. But what's this little bugger do here? Well, I tell you. So a cold enrichment valve has vacuum connected all the way mimically to the inner manifold. Now with the throttle body closed, which it is, that shut, the engine's running, the pistons are going down the cylinder, they're drawing air in, which creates a vacuum. That is felt on the line on the back of here, which connects to this small vacuum here, and there's a diaphragm inside here. So that diaphragm, when it's on vacuum, goes that way, which means these two terminals there are not connected. So they're not connected for a reason. This reason here. So with the throttle, little switch here, click, click, click. When that's closed, this always has 12 volts ignition when the ignition is on. So when the switch is closed, that 12 volts with the switch closed goes to the idle valve system. So we won't delve on that at the moment. That'll be the next video or another video. What we want to know is when the throttle is open and that switch is open, that sends 12 volts to a terminal in here. Now, why is that important? So this is important for lots of reasons, but first we'll take a little wander. So we've got a fuel meter in head, lots of fuel pressure inside there. This is the fuel pressure relief valve inside there. This gives full system pressure on this pipe. And this pipe goes all the way down across the engine to our fifth injector. Now, fifth injector or your cold start valve, whichever you want to call it. This is an electrical solenoid, which means it needs a power on earth on that plug to operate. So it's got fuel pressure. You put 12 volts across there with an earth. That opens and sends fuel straight down there into the engine and does its job. Now you ask, how do we get power to there? Good question. I'll tell you. So it all starts with the starter motor. So this terminal here 
is called 15A. And that's quite important. This power, this is from your battery. The start might reverse through the engine. And we have a terminal here and a terminal here. When you crank the engine, as in turn the ignition on and go to start the car, power is sent to here. And when the start motor engages and turns the engine over, that also sends power to that terminal. That wire there, from that terminal, is connected to here. Okay, so we've got power then. So when you're cranking the engine, we've got power from the start motor to our cold start valve. Okay, so we've got power, so where's the earth come from? This wire here. So, thermoton switch. Very important little switch. So, this sits in the coolant path, and on a cold engine, this switch is closed. So on cranking, you have 12 volts coming into there, which assists in warming up the wire that sits inside there. So along with the engine cranking and getting warm via the coolant, it has electrical current assisting in warming it up. So when it's cold, it's closed, which means this wire is an earth wire. So this wire goes in there into the switch and connects from the switch to the engine, which then earths through the earth path system. That also wire connects to the other side of a fifth injector. So there's our earth. So on cranking, we have power from there to the fifth injector. We have our earth path from there through the thermoton switch into the cylinder head. So that's our circuit, our power on earth. That then opens and sends fuel shooting inside there. So I've just said, this is closed while it's cold. So when it gets warm, the engine's in idling a little bit, a couple of minutes. This is warmed up enough for the coolant, plus the electrical current comes in there. This switch is now opened, which means this does not connect to that. So we've lost our earth path. So, if we need this to operate again, how, how is it going to work? So we'll go back to our starter motor. So as we said, on cranking, this little terminal gets power. Once it's not cranking, that becomes dormant. It doesn't connect to anything. Well, that's interesting. So why is it doing that for then? Well, we'll head back to our cold enrichment valve. There's a wire from this cold enrichment valve all the way down to our fifth injector and connects to that. Hmm, interesting. So on one side of the system, when it's cranking, we have power to there. It also sends power up to this switch. But that's irrelevant because it's not connected at the moment. Remember the engine's idling, throttle's closed. Oop, we have vacuum which means that diaphragm is pulled that way. So that power is not connected to anything. Again, it's dormant, it doesn't do anything. And now, when the engine has been running, like I said, that's dormant, still connected to that, and connected to that. So now we go on to our throttle switch. So our throttle switch, as I said, when it's closed, covers idle inside. So when it's open a touch, that is sending power to this side. Now that's interesting because we need th this is connected to a fifth injector over there. So we're closed, we're idling, we've opened. The switch has now sent power to our little friend on the left. And then the person goes boom, dumps the throttle. So the butterfly's open. We've lost our vacuum. We've lost our vacuum, which means that valve diaphragm has gone back across there and as we know there's power there that diaphragm now makes the circuit which sends the power from the micro switch into here which crosses over to the other side which as we know links to a fifth injector it also links to the start motor but that doesn't connect to anything so we ignore this section here so now with the micro switch sending power to the cold start. It has a new power feed and 
while the engine is cold, we still have an earth path. So this is our second side. So the first side is cranking, power, boom, earth, injects fuel. Now it's not cranking, it's now running and idling. Switch is closed. No power going to that, but we've still got an earth. Throttle's opened, the vacuum is lost, the diaphragm goes across, 12 volts from the micro switch to there, all the way down to there, that's our new power source. We've still got our earth, so every time you dump that throttle, open it, the vacuum's lost, power goes to that, that and operates and puts more fuel in. Now again, that only works until the engine's warmed up, switch opens, the earth is lost, there's no earth on that now. But even so, every time you dump that throttle, it still sends power to that, but because now we've lost our earth, that won't operate. So hopefully that has shed some light on how and why our two cold start systems work. Our cold start valve, fifth injector, and our cold enrichment valve. Again, pretty simple items, but they're quite complex when you think about it. Now, without that starter motor doing its little switchy thing, the system wouldn't work, which can also lead you into other problems if you update your start motor and it doesn't have the right terminal. If you put it on, it hasn't got two pins, and you put the wire from there onto the other pin, every time you accelerate, it's going to send power when the engine cold. It's going to send power down there. It's also going to send power to the start motor. So every time you open that throttle with the wrong start motor, it's going to try and engage the start motor, which is going to be nasty. So just for a final one, a simple overview again, just to reiterate. So we have our start motor, our thermoton switch, our fifth injector, and our cold enrichment valve. So on a cold engine, that switch is closed, which means cranking goes into there, warms the switch up. That green and white wire connects to fifth injector, which is our earth. Our electric solenoid needs a power source. Our power source on cranking comes from that terminal to there. So our power on earth, boom, boom, fuel in. Now the engine's idling, that's dormant, but we need some extra fuel because the engine's cold. So when we floor it, where's the power coming from? We've still got our earth, throttle's open, switch over there, our vacuum's lost. That diaphragm closes, the micro switch sends power to that, which comes all the way back to the fifth injector, gives us our new power source, sends fuel in. When that warms up enough, that wire does not connect to that anymore because the switch is open. So we even know that's still sending 12 volts down, we've lost our earth, so the solenoid doesn't work. Simple as that, really. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it shed some light on how the system works and gives you the confidence to self-diagnose and self-check 